zone or zone gold uh, patty downey is going to be presenting i'm excited to have him join us it's a development stage company with project in burkina faso and uh Well, I'm actually, um, right now I'm in quarantine because I was down in Burkina a week and a half ago. So I've got to do my 14 day quarantine. So I'm sitting up here in Whistler uh, on my own. Uh, so it's uh, a lot of time to get some good work done. So great. Thanks for the uh, opportunity, Kai, to present here. It's quite an exciting story now. We're right at the cusp of building. So um, I'll walk you through uh, where we're at, what we're doing and what next steps will be for the company. Lots happening over the next uh, two years, I would think. forward looking statements i think you all know that so we'll go straight into the next so i took uh, on the ceo's position about three years ago i was actually um sort of retired on boards and um, this opportunity came along i really looked at it and changed the development strategy to something i believed that orzone could build and finance at the time obviously gold was at a different gold price but it didn't matter to me it really was looking at it from a point of view of what could we build and how would we build it so I paired it back to look at it from an oxide sulfide development. It has a very, very large resource, both in oxides and, and sulfides. We really focused on the oxides first. They're free dig, very low strip ratio, no drill and blast, no crushing. Only 20% has to be ground. So it was quite a simple uh, uh, flow sheet and um, very, very economical. So we delivered on that RCF, which are probably one of the, the premium uh, private equity mining groups in the world, did about eight weeks due diligence on the project, including several site visits. Um, they invested uh, to date about $39 million in the, in the company, and they are a 20% shareholder. We, once we delivered the oxide, which showed about uh, 90,000 ounces for 10 years and a little bit at the end of it, we, we focused on the high grade sulfides. There are a lot of sulfides here, but we really focused on the, on the zones that um, would deliver the best uh, margin. And we delivered an updated feasibility study last year, um, which uh, increased the production to about 140,000 ounces over the first 10 years and about 121 over 13 years. So a very robust project and still wide open. Lots of exploration to do both at depth and, and other targets that we've now identified. We're right now just at the final stages of putting our debt together. Uh, that should be done before the, the end of the year. We're going to start construction at the beginning of uh, 2021. And in general, uh, projects in Burkina get built in 18 months or less. So you can expect to see first gold pour late Q2 in 2022. So very rapid uh, to, uh, uh, timeline to production. And we as, share, as uh, management and board, we are very aligned with the shareholders. So we own almost 6%. We bought them in the market. We continue to buy them. Um, you know, I'm personally one of the largest individual shareholders, as is my chairman. So we're focused on NAV per share. It's key to us. So that's why we look at stage development so we can raise the capital and invest it in the project. We're not blowing a, a, the project apart with a large debt uh, structure. Uh, you know, the equity is reasonable to build it. And we, we build the sulfide expansion out of the oxide cash flow. So that's a, a very, very important point to know. So we've done a lot of studies on this. We're ready to go. Um, it's a, it's a very simple country to operate in, great mining code. So again, once the debt's raised, off we go to the, to the construction. You know, we're shovel ready, fully permitted for oxides and sulfides. One thing about Burkina, you know, you do, you do things right. Permits uh, are very rapid. Uh, we're in uh, uh, ra advanced negotiations with our debt providers. We're in a great location. West African just built the project about 15 kilometers away from us. Uh, they're up in production right now, doing about 200,000 ounces a year. Um, we're in a zone now of 10 million ounces of M&I resources. Only two companies own all of the land in the area, ourselves and West African. As I said, RCF are a big shareholder, very, very supportive. And we're highly leveraged to gold price. And I'll show you that uh, later on in the slide presentation. These are the villages we built. Like every West African uh, project, you do have to do a certain amount of relocation. Uh, that's all been permitted, agreed to, signed on, and the, the movement is happening right now. I think we've got almost 100 families moved into these villages, and we do the rest over the month of uh, October, November, which will allow us to start the construction in Q1. And we've got a strong track record. Uh, you know, I think everybody shows their team, but we've done it right through from, uh, you know, uh, construction, operations, uh, M&A. We've got a lot of M&A behind us. 
a very strong board, brought two uh, key members brought in by RCF. We put our team on, on the ground in Burkina, so we've got our team ready to, um, to start the project. We kept them all together during COVID, which was important, you know, that we didn't let anybody go. That was a, a really important part of our strategy. So now we're, we're back. To, that's why I was down there uh, the week before last, just to get everybody ready to meet the key people, ensuring that the, that the relocation was going as planned and getting ready for construction in Q1. Burkina, if you don't know it, very established gold country. It's about the size of Colorado. 14 gold mines have been put into production, two in the last 18 months. The one beside us, San Brado, they started clearing and grubbing in March of 2019, produced first gold in March of 2020. I defy you to find a, a project in North America or elsewhere that you can, you can start uh, you know, earthworks in, and, and, and finish gold pour in a year later. Wainyon, which is a Tarangas project in the south, a very successful project going extremely well. So this is a place that you can get up, get things built and get them going fast. Great logistics. One key thing that's occurred over the past 12, 15 years of mine construction is you now have people in country that know how to pour concrete, bend rebar, wreck tanks, weld steel work, wreck steel work. So you don't have this big fly in, fly out uh, expat group that has to come in and build the mines. All that skill set is there. And furthermore, the skill sets and operations, geology, metallurgy, mine planning, et cetera, are all Burkina Abbey. So you've got that skill set in country, which makes it a very efficient place to operate. We're in a great location. We're about an hour and 15 minutes from the capital on two paved highways. We can go either way. Burkina has had its share of news in terms of security, but not for us. We're uh, right in the center of the, of the uh, country. We've never seen anything. I've gone there several times, as I said, including a week and a half ago. Uh, West African Belt Sembrado right beside us uh, over that period of time. Great logistics. We, we are one of the fortunate um, mines that has water right on the project, so we don't have to uh, build major structures or put in pumping systems. The power line beside it is, is not reliable, but it will be, I would say in the next uh, three to five or overall power costs. And we've got local towns beside us, which provide the labor source. We have done a lot of training over the past two years. So we will have a lot of our local workforce coming from the villages that we have relocated, which is an important part of our CSR strategy. So economics, very much like everybody in West Africa, it's a, it's a great place to do business, particularly oxides. Um, you know, it's a low cost, no drill and blast, local contractors, mining contractors. They use a cheaper fleet uh, for the oxides, which makes it very economical. So our IRR is 44% um, after tax at $1,300 gold and 360 million uh, uh, NPV. That includes by paying off for the sulfides out of cash flow and a two and a half year payback at 1300. At 1750, it's less than a year payback. And the, uh, the IRR is 88% after tax NPV 732. 13 years of mine life and I expect that it will go on towards 20. A large resource and lots of exploration. And here's the value proposition for us. You can see enterprise value per reserves and resources. We're in that period where we're just haven't started construction yet. You look at Bluestone who have raised their equity. We're there at smaller project, great group, um, great project. But you can see there the, the, where the value is. Sabina, Victoria, which I was on the board of, very successful project. Now WAF, our neighbors, 14 uh, kilometers away, look at what they're at. So you can see there's a huge value proposition for us in the, over the next 12 to 24 months. Market cap to NPV, and this is why we've been buying shares as, as management and board, uh, you know, 0.35 times NAV, if you gain, you look at Bluestone, you know, in the same phase as we are, but they've raised their equity 0.65, Victoria 0.88. These are single asset companies, by the way, so very, very comparable to us. Pure Gold 0.95 and West African, which is in Burkina right beside us, very successful startup, and you can see where they're at. So we will go across that right-hand side of that bar chart. And we're in that orphan period, the, the so-called Lausanne curve. Once we secure project financing and start project construction, you go rapidly up that curve like everybody else has into the start of commercial production as a single asset company. 
And a couple of examples of this, two of them North American, successful North American projects, you know, Atlantic and, and Pretium. Pretium uh, had its ups and downs because of its greed and lumpiness, but Atlantic Gold, small like ourselves, built it in, in a way that they could build a large resource behind it. It's exactly the same plan as we have going forward. So as we go through that and, and we go through commissioning and operations, you will see the value coming through. Rocks Gold, again, West African, again in, in Burkina, both been huge successes. And people ask me about risk in West Africa and Burkina. And I say, well, yes, there's political risk. Of course there is, but there's political risk everywhere. But look at the execution risk. When you put your money into a project, do you expect it to be built on time? Do you expect it to be built on schedule? Do you expect it to start up and produce as per the 43101? Well, this is what happens in West Africa. Look at the, the track record of success. Either ahead of schedule or on schedule, only one that's been on schedule. Uh, you know, all the rest have been ahead, uh, under budget or ahead of, uh, or, uh, or uh, on budget. And then they started up, like Taranga started up within a month, it was uh, at, at commercial production. The same with, um, with Rocks Gold, the same with our neighbor WAF. Incredibly successful projects, all producing free cash flow with, with excellent margins. So from a point of view of risk of, of project execution, it's just not there in West Africa. They're all cookie cutter designs. They're all simple projects. And why? Well, it's flat topography, great logistics to get things in on time, uh, excellent ports. You've got a choice of three ports to get your, your supplies and equipment in. Uh, very simple uh, border crossings. You don't have to put up buildings. There's no heating and ventilation. There's no snow clearing. Uh, our pits are shallow, average pit depth of 45 meters. So you don't have deep pits here in, 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 the, in the project. Low pit maintenance. So very, very simple project, conventional CIL with very fast leach kinetics. And it's a big shear zone. This is why the um, TS, the tailing storage facility and the process plant are in the middle. You get pits either side of it. So you're, you're, you're hauling either side. We start right in the middle. So very low cost, low mining, right downhill to the plant. Simple plant, shallow pits. Oxide is, a, is totally separate from the sulfide. Straight in to the mill. We, we put it all into the mill, even though we only grind 20%. Uh, it goes straight into a 24-hour leach, uh, into a thickener out into tailings. That's how simple it is. So very few moving parts, low power cost, low reagent consumption. We build the sulfides exactly uh, the um, uh, uh, beside the oxides and they're separate so we don't have to try and integrate the sulfides into the oxides we could do it it could save a bit of money but from the point of view of operational upside uh, it's way better to do what we've done so that the we can expand the sulfides it's a 2.2 million ton per annum plant by adding four extra tanks and you see the room there by adding a ball mill we can get up to four million tons and it does not affect the downstream side on the oxides so again, during uh, maintenance of the sag mill or maintenance of the, um, of the jaw crusher, we can continue to run the oxide. So we get way better availability on the plant. And the banks love that. Where's the upside? Well, the, the brown at the top is the, is the oxide uh, part of the deposit. You can see the, the blue pit, that's the sulfide. It only goes down 90 meters. Why does it only go down 90 meters? Because in the north, it's only drilled to 90 meters. So we know it's wide open beneath that. But you can see in the south, it's drilled. It's still wide open. That shear zone is about 60 meters wide. So mining width of about 80 meters. So again, and that's a $1,400 pit shell. So you can see we easily double what we have today. So there's great upside from the point of view of right beneath the sulfide pits and um, a long strike. 